Good morning, Savannah. Actually, we're in Skidaway Island State Park. It's about a 25 minute drive to downtown Savannah and that's where we stayed last night. But this morning, we are making our way to downtown Savannah again, and we are going to explore this city a little bit more. We have a lot in store today, but our first stop is going to Forsyth Park. We parked our Winnebago by Colonial Park Cemetery and then walked about a mile toward Forsyth Park, passing many beautiful things along the way. This is the Savannah Fire Department. They say this is the first fire department in the country to use motorized fire trucks. There's a pretty lady, the queen of, queen of Queen Street. We're in Monterey Square, and this is a monument in honor of Pulaski. And Erica has a pretty significant history with Pulaski. You want to tell us about your Pulaski story, Pulaski history? Uh, we got a day off annually in the state of Illinois for Pulaski's Day in March. He really never knew exactly what he did, but he, apparently he was the war hero that brought uh, freedom, fought for the freedom here, and he was from Poland. And, and he's buried? He and he's buried here in Savannah, Georgia. Yet Monterey. Savannah does not take the day off. Yeah, Savannah schools don't even get the day off. That's a crock. So this is the Mercer Williams house. It is a house that was made famous in the uh, book and movie about Savannah, something about evil in the garden. I think the movie was called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And that window on the first floor right there behind the shrubbery is where that murder took place. Very ominous. And uh, as fate would have it, the man who murdered the guy died right at that very window years later. A year later. A year later, Erica says. A year later to the day. I don't know, that kind of seems odd, but it's a, a haunted mansion here in Savannah. This is the Armstrong Keller Mansion, or Armstrong Kessler Mansion, and there is one single guy that owns this whole estate. And here's more pictures of the Armstrong Kessler Mansion. Beautiful place. Sears and Robux. So this fountain up here, the city of Savannah, bought out of a Sears and Robux catalog. I said it wrong again. What do you, how do you say it? It's Sears and Robux. Sears and Robux. Catalog for two thousand five hundred dollars. I don't remember what year it was, but uh, when they bought this fountain, it was not white. Years later, the mayor had it painted white. And when you're in Savannah, this is one of the places you have to get your picture taken. We're in Forsyth Park, and the park has all these huge live oak trees. They are pretty cool. And again, we are in Forsyth Park and walking through a little fragrance garden. Some roses over here. These trees are just covered with Spanish moss. Although we learned it's not from Spain and it's really not even moss, but uh, not sure how it got its name. And here is another monument in the park. I would recommend that if you come to Savannah, you definitely spend some time in Forsyth Park. You won't be disappointed. After we left the park, we started to make our way back to the Jepson Center. We were going to visit some of the museums in Savannah. We're at the corner of Jones and Barnard. 
is a shout out to Tony Barnard and the Barnardville people. We'll see if they even notice this in the video. Again, we're at Barnard Street, York and Barnard. We're in another one of uh, Savannah's squares. And I was just listening, there were tons of cicadas going, then all of a sudden they got real quiet. Why is that, hon? Why do you think they got quiet? Hmm. All the cicadas all at once just got quiet. <laughs> Listen, they're coming back. Not quite as loud that time, but they're still pretty good. There's the cicadas again, quite louder. And this is Trinity Church, founded in 1848. So it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and we've made our way to the entrance to the Jepsum Center. That's Eric and I on the screen. Yeah, it's cool. She just did a little leg kick. Do it again. Yeah, that's awesome. We are in the Jepsum Center. It's a big art gallery. This is like a big blue Ruby's Cube Square, something like that. And an orange room, it's pretty cool. Erica is turning in to the artwork. <laughs> you can see her little man purse that she's wearing. Or what do you call it? A sling purse, maybe. <laughs> and there it is. Here is the uh, Academy of Arts and Sciences. It's the Telfar Academy. And it is at the corner. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the corner of Barnard and President Street. And again, the Telfar Academy. Telfar Academy has these cool statues. You got Michelangelo over here, Raphael, Rubens. This is the famous bird girl. <laughs> Erica doesn't want me to talk very loud. So this is the bird girl. What's she famous about? Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. I don't know if they can hear that, but Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. What's, what's up with the uh, bird girl? She's weighing of good and evil, like the balancing of the scale. Ooh, she's weighing good and evil. That's not what it was intended for. Oh, wasn't what it was intended for. It was intended to hold food for birds. Oh. This Telfar mansion is huge. This is an enormous room. Lots of paintings everywhere. Crazy. We're getting ready to head into the Owens Thomas House and Slave Quarters. So this is part of the uh, Telfar Museums and this is our last stop on that little museum trip. So when Georgia was started, they originally banned slavery, hard liquor, Catholics and lawyers. Pretty crazy. So this is the slave quarters at the Owens Thomas house, and it wouldn't be unusual for 12 to 15 slaves to be living in this room. And this is the courtyard between the slave quarters and the main house. Built in 1819, this mansion exemplifies the neoclassical styles popular in England during the Regency period. The Owens Thomas House and Slave Quarters allow visitors to explore the complicated relationships between the most and least powerful people in the city of Savannah in the early 19th century. In 1830, lawyer, landowner, and enslaver George Owens purchased this property at auction for $10,000. He lived here with his wife Sarah, their six children, and sometimes up to 14 enslaved laborers. Over the next 121 years, the home would continue to be owned by the Owens family until the last descendant, Margaret Thomas, George Owens' granddaughter, bequeathed the property upon her death in 1951 to the Telfar Academy of Arts and Sciences to be run as a museum.
in honor of her grandfather, George Owens. Erica's getting ready to head into Savannah Bell. She's the Bell of Savannah. So by now we're starving and it's a good thing because next up is our food tour. We started at the Savannah Taste Experience and the first thing we ate was a fried green tomato palmetto cheese biscuit. It was great. We then headed to the Little Crown which is a British restaurant and ate meat pies. This is basically a sausage wrapped in a puff pastry. It was delicious. After leaving the Little Crown, we headed to the River District, where we stopped at Rhett's, and we ate some she crab soup. Say that five times, that's tough to say. But this soup was delicious. Then it was time for donuts and pork belly sandwiches from the Ordinary Pub. Then we headed to Mint to Be Mojitos and had some empanadas. And then our last stop was at the Savannah Bee Honey Company, where we tried multiple different kinds of honey. Well, we wrapped up our food tour at the Savannah Bee Company with a honey tasting. I didn't know there were so many different types of honey. So Eric is in there buying a few right now. After our food tour, we headed back to the Winnebago and rested for the rest of the afternoon. It's a little rainy day in Savannah, so we get the umbrella out now. Definitely got caught in a little rain shower twice in the last two days here in Savannah. That night, we headed to a restaurant called Trailer Park Hitch and it was a pretty cool place. They had a very interesting menu. We started our meal with PB&J wings. These were chicken wings that were tossed in pecan and peanut butter sauce and served with peach jam. I ordered the chicken biscuit plate and Eric got a sandwich that was called grilled apple pie with chicken. We're at Colonial Cemetery, it's raining, and we're getting ready for our ghost tour. So, uh, it's gonna be awesome. We're coming from the dueling area. This is the Hamilton Turner Inn. It was built in 1872 for Samuel Punk Hamilton. It was called the mansion of the Grand Victorian Lane. So there are many different types of ghost tours you can take in Savannah. Some of them you ride a bus, some of them you actually ride in a converted old hearse, but we decided to take a walking ghost tour. So we strolled down Savannah's shadowy lanes and discovered the ghost ghouls and legends of America's most haunted city. And if you're in Savannah, you have to take a ghost tour. That is a must. We've got to finish this ghost tour, and I must say that doing a ghost tour on our last night Savannah was a great way to end. If you're enjoying these videos, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. We definitely appreciate it. And let us know what you're looking forward to the most when you visit Savannah.